Hey everybody, Felix here. As promised, in this tutorial we're going to get moving on writing test benches so that we can simulate our FPGA. And I wanted to give you a sneak preview of what it is exactly that we're going to be setting up because it is going to be three tutorials. So um, this is the end goal, this is what we're getting to. It's this really slick looking graph of all of these different values that we can monitor and we can see how they're changing and what values they have. So there are a couple of reasons why you might want to use and write test benches. First, the FPGA chip is a black box. You can't see into it. So when you have a problem, you can't just look at it with a magnifying glass and figure out what all the different values are inside all of your gates. I mean, that would be nice, but we can't. So instead we use a simulation such as this to be able to look at all of the values. That lets us make sure that everything is working exactly as expected. It helps us with debugging when it's not. And it's overall just great for understanding what exactly is happening inside your circuit. Now unfortunately our Mojo IDE does not have this feature to be able to do simulations. So we're gonna have to bring our code that we want to simulate into Xilinx ISE. So go ahead and boot this old horse up and actually it has a ton of features so it's pretty cool but there are a ton of features and it takes a while to get familiar with them. Ultimately where we're going uh, normally when you boot it up you'll be on this implement tab but if you go under the simulation tab and you have a file, you'll see a simulate behavior button and that will bring up the program that we just looked at. Uh, where is it? Here. That'll bring up a program that looks like this. But to get it here, we need to first isolate our circuit into its own module and then we write a test bench for that module. Let's make a new project so we can do this test and we'll do it for our button counter that we just set up over here in the last few tutorials. That's our state machine. Make sure HDL is selected down here. Save it where you want. I would like it to be in this folder. Perfect. Next. Here's where you select your specific FPGA chip and board. If you're using the Mojo V3 like I am, then these are the values you want to choose. Make sure Verilog is selected down here for all of these. And hit next and finish. All right, right click on your top hierarchy, that's your chip there, and we'll add a new source, Verilog module, and this is our state machine. You can just skip this because we're pasting in right from here. So we need to get this code, it's currently just in the main Mojo Top module, we need to get our state machine isolated in its own module. So I'll leave that as an exercise. You can pause the video right now and then I'll show you what it looks like when you're done. So go ahead and pause that now. Okay, so here is our state machine in an isolated module. The main things that you need to change are to move this register L 
up as an output register because we need to be able to access it to hook up the LEDs. And then I also changed NS to NXS because it was lighting up blue and just to be safe so we don't use some reserved word, I just changed that. Now we have two more changes that we need to make. One, we used to have this running at one hertz, the slow clock, and that's because a human hand could not physically push the button and release it fast enough. So we slowed the clock way down. But in the simulator, it only lets us run up to 8.8 .8 milliseconds, which sounds like an extremely small amount of time, but it has a time resolution to picoseconds. So there are a lot of, there, there's plenty of opportunity for things to happen in the simulator. But because of that, we can't use one hertz. It will time out. It will not be able to finish the simulator. So if we just make this a lot faster, like 10,000 hertz, that'll be fine. And because we're controlling everything digitally now, not physically pushing a button, that won't be an issue. The last thing that we need to address is we have not set up anything for when the board is reset. That is an important thing to have, um, especially in the testing, because everything will break when you go to simulate it if you don't have any reset initializations. So here is a good place to do the reset initialization. We can come down here and say, if RST is equal to 1, and we're going to want to indent this stuff. We'll do this. Here we go. If the reset is happening when the clock ticks, then what do we need to initialize values for? We should probably set output. Um, we could set, we definitely need to set CS, NXS, and T. Let's do that. CS is a register for the state, and then NXS is the same deal, and then T are temporary LED registers is three bits of zero. and three bits of zero for the official output to the LEDs. All right, now we know exactly what the state of these will be when it comes on. No guessing, no X's, they're all gonna be zero. Perfect. Of course, we use the slow clock module, which means we're gonna have to go import that. So we can come up here we can actually hit add source and I can go find from our button counter source folder there's slow clock and we can just add it right in here it is now in our project that's a fast way to import and so now our state machine module has everything it needs to be used in a test bench. All right, well, I know that was a lot of boring setup stuff, but it had to be done. We had to take it into 
the Xilinx ISE program and in the next tutorial we will actually write the test bench. See you then.